Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is on 11011 sequence detection using more overlap and non overlap. So before going to the topic, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I'll respond within 24 hours. So before going to the state machine, let us understand the terms overlap and non overlap. So overlap means a bit of the previous sequence can be used in the next sequence, whereas in non overlap, the bits of the previous sequence cannot be used in the next sequence. So to understand this better, let us take an example and understand them. So this is the input sequence which we are getting in our design. So from this input sequence, we need to find the pattern 11011. So let us use overlap case and get the output first. So when the first bit enters, the output would be 0 since we have not got our pattern 11011. Similarly with the second bit, third bit and fourth bit. But when fifth bit enters, we got our pattern 11011. So the output will be high. So from here, we will trace back from here to this bit that is our pattern matching with this pattern. It's not matching, so the output will be zero. And next from here to here, is our pattern matching with this pattern? No, it's not matching, so it will be again zero. But from here, we can start a new pattern. As a result, we will get our pattern over here that is 11011, so the output will be high. And similarly, we will trace from here to here, so output is zero again. And from here to here, the output is zero. But from here to here, we are getting our pattern. So from this input sequence, we are able to get our pattern 11011 three times. So this is one time, this is second time, and this is third time. And here you can see that the bits of this pattern are overlapping with the bits of this pattern. So now let's look for the non-overlap output for the same pattern and the same input sequence. So we got the same input sequence, but we are detecting the output for non overlap case. So as we get the first bit, the output will be zero. And for the second bit and third bit and fourth bit also. But at fifth bit, since we got our pattern 11011, so the output will be high. And since it's a non overlap case, we cannot use this previous bit for the next sequence. So from here, we need to search again. So as a result, we will get the zeros as output from this point to this point, we can get a pattern. So we are getting the pattern at the last bit. So all the outputs will be zero till here. So we are able to detect the pattern twice in this sequence when we use non overlap case. So this pattern is neglected because it's an overlap case. So we don't want any pattern bits to be used for the next pattern bits. So this is non overlap out. So now let us go for Murray machine. So Murray machine output is function of the current state. The output only depends upon the current state. So now let us draw the sequence detector state machine for the pattern 11011. So to draw the state machine, we need to know the number of states. For pattern 11011, the number of states will be six. So you can see from the number of bits, it will be five states, plus we require one extra state in Moray machine. Okay, as a result, we'll get six states. So let us name our states. So in state machine designing, naming of state is super important and we cannot name the states as A, B, C, D, E or F because that is not good because it will not make your designing process easy but if you follow this naming style it will make your designing process smooth and clear so now let us see how to name the states for 11011 sequence detector so this is our sequence and in more machine we require six states so the first state would be named as initial state or idle state. So the first state will be named as idle where your detection starts. The second state 
will be written as such. So first we will take any bit variable but we will write the first bit of our sequence. And third state will be referred by two bits of our sequence that is S11. And fourth state will be represented by the using three bits of our pattern that will be S110 and fifth state which will be represented by the four bits of our pattern S1101 and last state would be represented by all bits of our pattern S11011. So these are our states which we'll be using in the sequence detector of Murray overlap and non-overlap. So now we will do the transition. So how it will move from this state to this state and let's go for it. So this is a sequence detector for 11011 using Murray overlap. So let's start with the state machine and that is our initial state idle. So here it is the output represented inside the state. So this is the state name and this is the output. In Murray machine our output is only function of the current state. So when we get a 1 as the input for the idle state we will move from idle to S1 state. The output is also 0 at S1 state because we have not found our pattern completely. So if we get 1 at S1 state we will go to S11 state. So we got the input as 1 and we are moving from S1 state to S11 state and output is still low. So if we get a 0 as the input then we will go to S110 state. So we have moved from S11 to S110 and the output is still low because we have not found the complete pattern and now if we get a 1 we will go to S1101 state. So we have reached S1101 state and the output is still low because we haven't found the pattern 11011. So in S1101 state if we get 1 that means our pattern is found. So in the next state we will have the output as high. So we have found our pattern 11011 in this state and the output is high. So now if we get a 0 or if we get 1 what happens in overlap case? If we get a 0 we can start the next pattern using the last 3 bits 110. So from here we will go back to S110 state to start the new pattern. So if we get 1 what will happen? If we get 1 over here that means we can start a new pattern from the last 2 bits that is 1 1 that is starting of the sequence so we can go back to S11 state. So there you go the major transitions are complete so now let us fill out the remaining transition. So if it is 0 as input for idle then we will stay at idle state only. If we get a 0 at S1 state we need to go back to idle. If we get a 1 at S11 state we can restart our pattern from that state. So we are staying over there. So now if we get a 0 at this state we need to go back to idle. And if we get a 0 at this state as input then we need to go back to idle. So here is the state machine for Murray overlap for detecting 11011. So I have drawn so I have drawn the state table using the state machine. So when we are in idle state, when we are in idle state and we get input as 1, we move to S1 state. So when the input is 1, we are moving to S1 state or else we are staying in the same idle state. So I have represented the state machine in the state table format by using the state machine and the output is as shown we are getting output only in S11011 state. So this is the transition table and if you want you can draw the excitation table and perform a kmap operation on it and draw the circuit. So now let us draw the state machine for Murray non-overlap case. So previously we have drawn for overlap case and now let's draw for non-overlap case and let's see how the transition vary in the state machine. 
the states in Murray overlap and non-overlap are same. So the first state will be idle. So the first case is idle and let's say the input is 1 then we go to S1 state. So the input is 1 we are going to S1 state but the output is still 0 because we have not found our pattern. So if we get 1 at S1 state we will go to another state S11. When we are in S11 state if we get uh, input as 0 then we move to S110 state. So we are in S110 state our output is still 0 because we have not found the pattern. Now if we get the input as 1 then we will move to another state S1101. So we are in S1101 state and our output is still 0. Now if we get input as 1 then we go to S11011 state. So in S11011 state, we got our output as 1 because we found our pattern 11011. So how will be the transition of S11011 look? Because till now it is exactly similar for the previous Murray overlap. So the changes of transition are especially at this state. Since it's a non-overlap, if we get a 0, we cannot go back to S110. We need to go back to idle to restart the pattern. So now if we get a 1 as input, we can go to S1 state because it is a new pattern without using the previous bits. So this is an important transition for Murray non-overlap case. So now let us complete the remaining transitions of each state. So for idle, if we get a 0, then we will remain in idle. So for S1, if we get a 0 as input, we will go back to idle. For S11, if we get a 1, then we will stay in S11 state only. So in S110 state, if we get a 0, we need to go back to idle. So from S1101, if we get a 0, then we must go back to idle again. So there you go, all the transitions are complete and this is the state machine for Murray non-overlap case and for the pattern 11011. So you can compare them now. So the difference is in the last state that is S11011 which is the game changer for Murray overlap and non-overlap. I hope that this video is helpful for you. Please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and thanks for watching have no fear and start working thank you